and I am the technical evangelist for the AD Solutions team here at Manage Engine. And um, really what that means is I get the opportunity to go around the world helping administrators um, of, of Windows and Active Directory and technicians. I really just try to help administrators get a better understanding of Active Directory and try to solve problems that really um, have been problematic um, for them, um, whether it be for efficiency, whether it be for security, um, or just getting certain tasks done. Um, I do want to point you to some resources. Um, over the years, um, I have written about 15 books, and um, my latest book, um, hopefully my last book, this is the book you see here on the, on the um, slide, which is the Group Policy Resource Kit by Microsoft Press. Um, even though the book does have Windows Vista listed on it, um, the book is actually a very good desktop reference. Um, it has all the information about um, configuring, troubleshooting, um, setting up group policy, as well as it has um, all the information about group policy preferences in it. So um, it's a very, very, very good desktop reference for you. Um, also, in the online resources there, you see that there is a um, main on this blog now for over a year. So the blog doesn't require you to put any information in. Um, and the blog allows you to get information from us at Manage Engine and hopefully um, steps that allow you to um, um, get your job done a little bit better. So um, finally, um, there, there is another resource. It's not listed, but um, I, it's a brand new resource. And it's, it's actually on the Manage Engine website. And if you click on Active Directory on the main homepage of Manage Engine, you'll see a banner pop up. In the lower right-hand side of that banner, there's a link to security baselines. Um, we here at Manage Engine have really put effort into getting you administrators of Active Directory and Windows Server's resources to secure your environments. And this is kind of our gift to you of information that allows you to report, configure, monitor, and alert um, nearly any of the key security settings that you have um, within Windows Active Directory and your Windows Server. So it's a very thorough, very in-depth, very detailed resource there, and that's our security baseline. Um, finally, I will mention that we are kind of um, finishing off our 2015 world tour. Um, we've been doing seminars around the world. Um, I, I just got back from about um, 10 different countries over the last two months. Um, you know, countries such as Chile, um, Argentina, um, Sweden, Germany, um, the United Kingdom, and many more. So um, we still have some stops left. So if, if you happen to be on this webinar and you want to attend one of our seminars, um, please let us know. You can find them on the events page on our website. Um, we'll be in Milan, November 17th, Rome the 18th, and then Tokyo on December the 8th. So um, that'll be it. And then we'll be starting up our, our new 2016 World Tour um, probably in late February, early March of 2016. So that's going to be very exciting because we're actually going to focus on that security baseline. Anyway, that's enough information about me. Let's get on to the topic. The topic at hand is monitoring Active Directory. So before we talk about the agenda, I want to give you a mental picture. Imagine you're sitting as the Active Directory administrator at your desk. You're working away on emails, documents, doing different things, and you receive an email telling you that three users were added to the domain admins group in Active Directory and one user was removed. You get an email telling you this. And the email says that the actions occurred two seconds ago. Now, imagine you get this email versus that information changes for domain admins and you don't find out about it until six months later when someone does something that's damaging to Active Directory. Which would you rather have? Would you rather be emailed telling you that the domain admins group changed membership? Or would you rather find out in a negative way where you have a consequence that occurs somewhere in Active Directory? Well, I think we all agree that we, we want to have information shared with us. So we want to monitor Active Directory. So what we need to talk about is what is change monitoring in Active Directory? And then we need to talk about how do we get that set up. So we need to 
you know, really talk about, you know, how do we set up auditing and how do we set up advanced auditing and what features um, are those and, and what benefits do that give us. Finally, once we get auditing set up, the information actually goes into the security logs on our domain controllers. And inside of these security logs um, is all the information that we need. But we're going to find as we go through the webinar that it's very difficult to pull this information out of the security log. So we really need to have a tool to help us do that. So really that's what we're going to talk about. Now if you do have any questions throughout um, the webinar, please go ahead and use your chat or your Q&A um, and go ahead and fill those out and we'll be answering those throughout the webinar. So please, any questions that you have, go ahead and um, send those away um, and we will get those um, questions out to you. If for some reason we can't get to all of your questions in the time that we have, um, we will be um, answering your questions through email after the webinar. Um, so let's first of all talk about what is change monitoring in Active Directory? Well, this is my definition. This is really the definition that we at Manage Engine use for change monitoring. Change monitoring is the ability to track all the changes to all of the objects that are in Active Directory. So, of course, we can monitor changes to users and groups, so that's easy. But what about computers? What about group policy objects? What about the settings in group policy objects? What about the password policy, which is of course a setting in a group policy object, but obviously that has extreme um, effect in your organization. What about permissions on key files and folders? What about permissions about Active Directory delegation? All of these things are so important for you to know what's going on, and today we don't have any of those tools that Microsoft gives us. We, we don't have a mechanism that allows us to monitor the changes that are occurring in Active Directory. It's more of a manual process. Now, some of you might have written some scripts or might have written you know, some kind of a, a, a gizmo to go in and look at information, but really what I'm talking about is change monitoring becomes a real-time activity of any change that occurs in Active Directory in such a way that I could be notified within a second if that change occurs. So that's really kind of the initial definition of change monitoring, but it even goes further than that. I don't only want to monitor those things. I need all the details around what's changed. So I need to know who's made the change. I need to know which object was changed, preferably by which administrator. I need to know when the object was changed, and if at all possible, in most cases, what the old setting was and what the new setting is. This is extremely valuable, especially when you're looking at group policy, because within group policy, we know we really don't have um, a save as, we don't have an archive of old things, all we have is what's resident now in the group policy objects, but if we can have some kind of a monitoring tool which tells us what the old value was and what the new value is, and if that's an errant change, now we can at least know what the old value was to set it back. So as you can see, this, this idea of change monitoring is pretty bold. I mean, I, I think most of us that are on this webinar want this information, we need this information, and we've even tried to achieve getting this level of change monitoring, but we've tried to use the Microsoft way and it's just failed us over the years. So we've kind of moved away from it. But what I'm going to say is that if we combine the Microsoft solution with a robust solution that's geared toward getting you the information you need quickly and efficiently, I think we can have a great solution. But we must start with some of the Microsoft solution first. So what does that Microsoft solution look like? Well, first of all, we need to set up auditing. And we need to set up auditing so that we can track all of the Active Directory changes. Now, in order to set up this tracking of the changes, we are going to set up the audit policy. Now, the audit policy has been inside um, Windows Active Directory, the group policy objects forever, and actually it was in system policy back in Windows NT, so the audit policy concept really hasn't changed much. Now, on your slide here, I have the path for how you get to the audit policy. Now, in our webinar today, we actually have a live Active Directory environment here, and so I'm going to go into my group policy management, and I'm going to show you the group policy objects that I have, and I'm going to show you how I have policy set up. So here I'm going to go to um, a group policy object linked to my domain, and I'm going to come under my window settings, my security settings, 
my local policies and right here is my audit policy. So you will see that I have quite a few things set up for the audit policy. Now I'm going to clarify two things that we're looking at. First and foremost, I'm looking at a GPO that's linked to the domain. If you only want to track Active Directory changes, you can have a GPO linked to your domain controllers OU and only affect your domain controllers. Because I'm actually looking at my Windows servers as well as my domain controllers, I have my GPO linked up at the domain level. Secondly, you will see that I have quite a few settings set up here in my audit policy and not all of these are required if you're just looking at Active Directory. So that's some differences that we have. Now, the most important thing that I want to stress is efficiency here. Not only efficiency of you, the administrator, but efficiency of your domain controllers and servers. I highly suggest that you only set up the audit policies that you need because we don't want to be tracking information that we're never going to utilize because it's first going to fill up our log before we want it to fill up and two, it's going to take time away from the resources on that server to do that. Now we've put together a document and if you email me or anyone at Manage Engine and the AD Solutions team, we can get you a document that specifically spells out exactly how you set up the audit policy and the ACLs so that you don't have to guess. We're just telling you exactly what to configure to get the information that you need. Now, inside of the audit policy, which many of you have been here, you're going to go in and you are going to set up success and failure for almost all of the settings that you have. The reason we want to do success and failure is we want to make sure that we are looking at the changes that have occurred, but also with the right tool, and of course Manage Engine is that tool, with the right tool, we can also tell you the failures when someone tried to make a change but failed. And these failures actually can give you insight into potential attacks that are going on your network, which are almost impossible to find without a tool like this. So what we want to do, first and foremost, is we want to go into group policy. We want to establish a GPO either linked to the domain controllers for Active Directory or at the domain level for domain controllers and servers. And we want to establish the audit policy. Now, you will notice that I am not modifying the default domain policy. Could you? Absolutely. Would I recommend it? Never. The reason I don't recommend this is that I really don't trust Microsoft to put the default domain control to the default. And they could do it in a service pack, they could do it in an update, they could do it really in anything. And I just don't trust that that's going to happen. So my recommendation is have a, have a new GPO dedicated to this. And actually when you install our tool, we create a GPO for you and set it up properly. So depending on which angle you take, you need to get the audit policy set up. All right, so now what we have is we have our audit policy set up. And we have both success and failure set up and we make sure that we are targeting the right machines. So in our case, we're targeting our domain controllers. Now, if I were to go in and set up the audit policy, like we tell you in the document, and it starts, it affects our domain controllers. And let's say you go into Active Directory, you create three user accounts and you modify five groups. And then you go to the security log and event viewer. You're probably not gonna see anything in the event viewer. The reason is just setting up the audit policy is the first step. You need to actually make a secondary configuration in order for the complete monitoring of Active Directory changes to occur correctly. And it's this secondary setting that I find most administrators fail to set up because they aren't aware that they have to set it up. Because most of us look at the audit policy, we see what it says, we trigger it and we think everything's going to work, but it doesn't work that way. We actually have to have a secondary set of settings. Now that secondary set of settings is we have to go into the ACL, the access control list, for the objects that we want to track, and we have to configure what's called the SACL, the security access control list. Now, I have that on the page for you, but let's go ahead and look at the live SACL. I come in here to Active Directory, and I'm going to go to Active Directory Users and Computers. 
So this is my domain controller here that we're looking at. And I go into Active Directory Users and Computers. And within Active Directory Users and Computers, I go to my domain node. I right click. I go to Properties. I go to Security. I go to Advanced. And then I go to the SACL. This right here, this auditing, is the SACL. And you will clearly see that I have configured the SACL. Now, if we go back to what I was talking about with my definition, I clearly said that I want to track all objects in Active Directory. So that would include computers, groups, organizational units, users, group policy objects. You can see that I have set up the SACL here in Active Directory, and if anyone modifies anything in Active Directory, I'm going to track it. So it's this secondary setting along with that initial setting that you must configure in order to get all of your Active Directory changes to show up in your security log. But really this is all we need. The group policy object policy changes and the SACL within Active Directory users and computers, now we're going to get information showing up in that security log on your domain controllers. Now, inside of this concept of the event viewer is the security log and the events. Now, I'm going to show you my security log, so I'm going to go back here to my domain controller. I'm going to go to Administrative Tools, Event Viewer, and then here under my Windows logs, I have my security logs. So here you can see all the events. I have 141,000 events that are inside of my log. So everything is working, but I want you to remember some things here. Each domain controller has a unique security log. The event viewer and the logs contained within the event viewer are not replicated between domain controllers. So each and every domain controller has a unique log. Why is that important? Well, depending on how you have your administration set up, you could have objects changing on any one of your domain controllers at any time. So that means that you are going to have to have a view of the security logs across all domain controllers in order for you to see every change that's occurring within Active Directory. So you're going to have to view each DC separately or somehow you are going to have to consolidate the logs. Okay? Now, this idea is extremely important when we start talking about the volume of information that we are going to have to go through. Now, before we move on and start looking at the events and trying to track down information, I want to point out one more additional feature that Microsoft provides to us to get even better view of what's changing in Active Directory. Now, this is called advanced auditing. Advanced auditing was first introduced in Windows Server 2008, but really became important in Windows Server 2008 R2 and greater. So if you have a Windows Server 2008 R2 domain controller or greater, like a 2012, 2012 R2, then you can take advantage of advanced auditing. What advanced auditing does is it expands the auditing, allowing you to get wider information, so more event IDs, as well as more in-depth information about the events that are occurring within Active Directory. But again, it's only for the newer operating systems. Now, this advanced auditing is part of group policy, so I'm going to go into group policy just like I did in auditing, but it's in a totally different area. Now, if I show you where this is in a live GPO, it's a little bit better to see and understand. So I'm going to come here to my group policy object. I'm going to edit the GPO. Now I'm going to show you where we just were with normal auditing. Normal auditing is here under local policies, the audit policy. Advanced auditing is all the way to the bottom here under the advanced audit policy. And under the advanced audit policy, you will see a little bit different format of how you set this up. But some of the most important aspects of this advanced auditing, for example, if we look at account management, is I no longer set up one audit policy that does all account management tracking. Now it can be precise. So I can go in and say, I want to look at user accounts, security groups, and computer accounts, and that's it. 
I don't want to look at application groups, and I don't want to look at other account events. So what this is doing is this allowing me to actually be more precise, but also more general in terms of getting more information about the changes that are occurring. In all, this is going to help reduce the log size that we have, allowing us to log more information about what we want in one particular log, getting us less information that we're having to plow through to get the um, information that we need. Now remember, advanced auditing, Server 2008 R2 and greater, normal auditing, Windows Server 2008 and before. Can you have both of them in the same domain? Of course. Because it's produced through group policy, because it's deployed through group policy, you can have one GPO configuring your 2008 machines, and you can have another GPO configuring your 2008 R2 machines. Heck, you could even put all the settings in the same GPO, because the 2008 and before machines will just ignore the advanced auditing. So that's how we get to getting everything that we need tracked inside of Active Directory. Now, I just kind of give you some information here. Um, we can get you these slides um, after the webinar, so if you email us, we can get you the slides. Um, that's why I wanted to put as much detail in here as possible. So now that we have our domain controllers tracking information inside of the security log, now let's go in and try to find some information. So first and foremost, I have, as I said, just under 141,000 events. Now what I want to do is I want us to go back to the image that I created for us at the beginning of the webinar. At the very beginning of the webinar I said, you are sitting at your desk working and you get an email informing you that the domain admins group changed membership. Now, that's kind of our best case scenario. Let's see what the event viewer can do for us in solving these problems. Okay. Now, first and foremost, what I want to do is I want to try to find domain admins being mentioned in any of these 141,000 events. So if I right-click on the security log, I have this option called filter. Now, if I filter, I actually want to filter on domain admins. So somehow, let's see if keywords work. If I can type in domain admins for keywords, Ah, but it does. It's it's actually not a text box. It's a drop. None of these options say domain admin. So it appears that I'm I, I I can't utilize the filter to get the information that I need. So let's let's look for another option. So if I go to security, I have find. Okay, well that's kind of like a search. And here I can actually type in domain admins. So I type in domain admins and I hit click find next. So I wait and I wait. And I wait, and I continue to wait. We only have an hour for the webinar, so we're kind of limited on time. Um, well, let's just cut to the chase. This is a very inefficient, as you can see, very clumsy, very awkward way to try to find information. Now, what's worse is what if you have 10 domain controllers? Each domain controller has its own security log. You're going to have to do this 10 times. You're going to have to wait 10 times for this thing to try to find what you're looking for. And remember, I'm only looking for one group. What if you have to go in and look at all privileged groups? Domain admins, enterprise admins, schema admins, exchange admins, SharePoint admins, SQL admins. You have a tremendous number of groups in Active Directory that have privileges. What if you wanted reports on all of them? Can you imagine trying to use a tool like this to try to find that information? Because what it's trying to do is find one instance. What if we want every time in the last six months that domain admins has changed membership? Could you imagine trying to filter through all of these logs to find this information? So the very first stumbling block that we have is we don't really have a good tool that's going to help us to get the information out. But the problem actually gets much worse. So if I were to ask you, everyone on the webinar, when was the last time that domain admins in your environment changed membership? Some of you would know and some of you wouldn't. But I'm going to guess that the last time domain admins changed membership was more than one day ago. Well, notice my log 
only goes back one day. 141,000 events is only for one day. What happens when information needs to be put in the log, but the log file can't handle it? Well, what happens is most of us have our security log set up to overwrite events as needed. So we're stuck. We only have a very short window of time which we can even track this information. And really it's exacerbated with the fact that we have logs that can't get very big. Now how big can the log get? Well, let's kind of scour through the Microsoft tools and see what it says. So I'm going to come back here to properties and you'll see here that it, it says a maximum log size but we really don't have any help or any information. So what we're going to do is we're going to leverage group policy to help us. So I'm going to go to my group policy object and I'm going to come up here to event log and here is the maximum security log size. Now we could, you know, start guessing what this maximum log size would be and we can find out that it's 4 gig. But let's read what Microsoft says about this log. Microsoft says that the log has a maximum size and it has a theoretical maximum of 4 gig. Now I don't know what theoretical means in this context but I'm guessing they really don't know. After 15 years I would think they would know. But really it doesn't matter what they think because they are going to guide us to a practical setting which is 300 meg. Now think about that. 300 meg? How big is 300 meg in today's storage capacity sizes. It's extremely small. So the issue that we have is that our log does have potential limitations. And when our log size has to get smaller based on Microsoft recommendations, what does that mean to the number of events? Well, that means that our events are going to be smaller. And that means we're not going to be able to store as many events inside of our log. But what about backup? What about, what about backing up the log? Is it possible to auto-archive the log? I mean, ideally what we want to do is when the log fills up, we don't want to delete anything. We just want the log to auto-archive automatically so we can always go back and get that information. Is that possible? Well, actually I just wrote a blog on this because as I go around the world ask in administrators, I find that less than 10% of the administrators in Active Directory know that Microsoft put auto-archiving inside of the event viewer in Server 2008. Now this is not a special version of Windows, but if I go to Security, Properties, I have archived the log when it's full. It's right here. We've had the capability for years. So what does this mean? Well, this is just kind of a generic setting. Let's go to the actual group policy to see exactly how we can control this. Now inside of a GPO, you can go under your Windows settings, I'm sorry, your computer configuration, administrative template settings, Windows components, event log service, security, and you will see here you have controls and policy to set up the archiving of a log for the security log. You can actually do it for the other logs as well. Not only can you set it up one place to make sure it auto archives, you can go in and set up the maximum log size and even a path for where the auto archive is going to be. Now when this auto archives, you are going to receive a file that has a date time stamp for when the log was created. So you were going to have a multitude of files that are the auto archive logs per day per domain controller. Okay, well that doesn't sound horrible. So, so let's say that on average I have 10 logs per domain controller. How do I get information out of the logs? Well, that's an easy answer. It's not an easy task. You're going to have to come here to security and open all of those saved logs. So if you have 10 domain controllers and each domain controller produces 10 logs per day, that means per day you will have to import 100 files into an event viewer to try to find the information just for that day. Now, let's do some math. If I have, I'm going to round up here for easy math, if I have 150,000 events on 10 domain controllers, 
That's 1.5 million events at any one time across all 10 domain controllers. But if I have 10 logs, that's by another factor of 10, that gives me 15 million events per day for my domain controllers. That's just for one day. Well, when was the last time that your domain admins changed membership? I'm going to guess it was probably a couple of weeks ago. Let's say 20 days. So now, if we have 15 million events in one day, we have to now go to 300 million events in order for us to hopefully find the last time domain admins change membership. That means that we are going to have to import 10 times 10 times 20, that's 2,000 logs into the event viewer in order to find that. And once we get them here, we only have this find option. So I think you can see that we have some significant limitations when it comes to this idea of the security log. When it comes to the idea of the security log, we, we have significant issues that we're going to have to overcome. Now, Microsoft has given us some options, right? The options that Microsoft has given us is these custom views. And the custom views allow us to put multiple logs from one domain controller into a single view. That's really not going to help us, though. Microsoft has also given us an option that's called event log forwarding. So if I wanted to get the events from 10 domain controllers into one single log, I could do that using Microsoft technology. And that Microsoft technology is event log forwarding, and it uses subscriptions in order to achieve that. Now, all you need to do is you need to come into your subscriptions, establish a subscription. Within the subscription definition, define all 10 domain controllers, and then select the events that you want from the security log on all 10 domain controllers to be in a single log. Well, that's not too bad, right? I mean, that, that's kind of at least getting us further along in the process. So now we could have a single log and that single log shows up here under forwarded events from all 10 domain controllers. Okay, well, that's, that at least gives us one place that we're going to have to go look. Well, guess what? Forwarded events log has the, the same configurations of limitations on the log size. We could archive it, but now we're going to have this archive. So we kind of run into some of the same problems. But remember back to my scenario. I don't want to have to go into a log and find anything. I just want an email. Is it possible for the event viewer to email me when an event shows up? And the answer is yes. That's another feature that Microsoft put in the event viewer. So Microsoft really did a good job in the new event viewer getting us some of these new features. Now the way that you exercise this feature is that you go to the event that you want, you right click on it, and you attach a task, and one of the tasks that you can associate is to send an email. So fantastic, right? Well, keep this in mind. We want to know in our scenario when the domain admins group changes membership. The best you can do here is the event ID. And the event ID that you are associating with this email is a modification to a group. I cannot get down to the domain admins group level, so it's any group that changes an Active Directory. So that means when the HR group changes, you're going to get an email. When finance changes, when technicians change, when the secretaries group change, when the engineering group changes, when any group with an Active Directory changes membership, you're going to get an email. So you're going to get a tremendous amount of traffic, which really doesn't help you much. So we're stuck. So now. We, we, we have some significant limitations. We have some issues with the event viewer. First, the log is too small, which creates too many archived logs. The interface doesn't provide re for reporting. We didn't even get to that. I mean, can you show me somewhere in the event viewer where I can produce a report? I mean, there is no reporting. There, there is nothing here. So Microsoft really hasn't done anything for us with regard to reporting. Events are hard to decrypt, 
right? I mean, if I try to find an event inside of Event Viewer, so let's say we go to, um, let's see if I can find an event here. Um, so this says that I have some type of a Kerberos authentication, the TGT, um, and then it gives me information about the Kerberos ticket, client address. Um, I really don't know what this means. I mean, obviously, Kerberos was tapped on the shoulder. Something happened, but we really, really don't know. If we look at other information regarding this, I mean, it tells us a log on type 3. Didn't really help us that much. So what are we going to have to do? Well, here's the scenario that most of us do. We come into the event viewer. We find an event. We really don't know what it does. So we type in the event ID, which is right here. And we put in some information, some, you know, generated when a logon. And we go to the internet and we search on the event ID with a couple of terms that are in the event, the description, and we try to find out what in the world that event means. Well, this is no way to actually administer and get information. This is not a way to monitor the changes in Active Directory. So the problem that we have is the events that are native to the event viewer in the security log aren't that easy to look at. Another issue with the event viewer is we have multiple logs. I, I potentially have 10 logs if I have 10 domain controllers. And I, I was in Sydney, Australia just last month. There was someone that had 117 domain controllers. 117 domain controllers. That means I have 117 logs that I at one time have to look at to find information. I mean, that, that's more than a full-time job. That's a team of administrators attempting to mine the information out of these logs. And in the end, the alerting isn't detailed enough. We can do alerts, but we can't get down to the information we need. So let's take the concepts that we want to achieve and try to solve these with a tool that's designed to do this. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my environment and I'm going to go to a tool that has reports right here. So what I want to know is when was the last time that the domain admins group changed membership? So I make a click and in the last 30 days it hasn't changed. Well let's go back to six months. I know that my domain admins group changed on September 3rd, 2015. That's the last time. Now, the last time that I checked, today is the 28th. So we have approximately 50 days since the last time that my domain admins group changed membership. We are in the billions. We are in the billions of events that we would have to go through using the Microsoft way, that find option, to try to find this one entry, and I found it with a couple of clicks. Now think about the power of this. The power of a tool like this gives you information with a couple of clicks. Instead of having to work, the tool does the work for you. Now this report right here, Modified Admin Groups, is one of 120 plus reports that you can see here that are an 80 audit plus. For example, when I often leave and go on a trip to do seminars and I come back, I want to know what changed in Active Directory. So what I can do is I can go to account management and I look, can look at all Active Directory changes over whatever period that I want. So yesterday, I can look at all my changes that occurred. I had one. Obviously, if I want to look further, I could go back and say, I want to know in August every change that occurred with an Active Directory, and I can get that listing. This is powerful stuff. This is what we need. This is what an administrator absolutely has to understand. For those of you that are related to PCI, PCI requires that you track all administrative actions. Well, administrative user actions is here. You simply go in and you add in Patsy is one of my administrators, a name, and it will tell you exactly what Patsy has done over whatever time period you put in. Could you imagine going through a hundred million events 
looking for the information about what Patsy did, I, I, I can't imagine you even doing that. Now normally about now when I'm in a live webinar or live seminar, someone says, well, what about PowerShell? Okay, let's be real. You think that PowerShell is going to be able to go through thousands of files looking for Patsy and be able to pull out what Patsy did in a nice, neat format like this? It's not possible. There's no way. There is no way that PowerShell is going to give you that type of solution. This is a tool that is designed specifically about gaining access to the information that you have inside of those security logs and reporting on it. Reporting on it not just for today, which is how long the log goes back, but reporting on it for months back to last year on the changes that have occurred for forensics purposes, for example. But what about the reality of your environment, okay? Now, I'm going to go back to my customized report or my report on admin. So I'm going to come to modified admin groups. You will notice that over the last six months, not only has domain admins changed, but other groups have changed membership. Other admin groups. Well, you may not even have a finance manager. How did I put finance managers in admin groups? Well, in my domain, finance managers is extremely important. And all I did is I went to configuration, I went to group modifications because we're dealing with groups, I went to the default report modified admin groups, and I simply added in through this option finance and HR managers. You could do the same thing for the privileged groups in your environment. You're going to have groups related to Exchange, SharePoint, SQL, maybe VMware, maybe Citrix, maybe some other application that you have. You've created custom groups. You have to put all those groups inside of this tool. Now, when you have the need to know when a group changes, you simply come down to your report and you can look at this. This is fantastic stuff. This is something you cannot get anywhere else. The ability to look at your groups and when they change over time. Extremely powerful and to customize it. Now, groups is obviously one thing that I think all administrators have to keep track of. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the scenario, and I want this scenario to, to really sink in, giving you the idea of the power of what AD Audit Plus can do. I'm going to talk about service accounts. Service accounts in most environments, especially in the United States, are a big problem because we have auditors that go in and ask, why haven't you reset the password for these service accounts? Most of the administrators lie to them and say, well, if I change the password for a service account, the service will break. And we all know as administrators that's not true. The real answer that we want to give them but we're afraid is we really don't know where service accounts are being used. Well, we at Manage Engine solved that for you. We created a tool for you, part of our AD Manager free tools. Notice it's free. You can download this today. I highly recommend you go to our website and you download our free Active Directory tools. One of the tools that you have is service account management. Under service accounts, you're able to list all of your servers and then go get the service accounts from those servers. So when you get those service accounts from all those servers, you now have a listing from every server that you selected which is part of your domain, and you have a listing of all the service accounts that are listed there. Now, many of the service accounts that are there are default, which you don't care about. We gave you a filter for that. We're going to give you the ability to document all of your Windows servers and get a master list of the service accounts that are configured for your Windows services. If you want to get the associated services, you can do that too. This is powerful stuff. This is free. Now, that documents it for you, but I want you to have more control. I want you now to go into AD Audit Plus, go to Configuration, and you're going to create a custom user modification report. You're going to do New Report. You're going to create a service account modification report with a listing of every service account that you just got from our free tool. And any time anything changes with any of those service accounts, notice this, the password changes, it's renamed, it's moved, it's modified in any way, you're not only going to get 
a report capability. So here, if I go to my reports, I'm going to come down here to my reports, service account modifications, and right here are all of my service account modifications. This is pretty cool, right? Watch this. If anyone goes into Active Directory and they modify my service account by example disabling it, how much problem is that for you? We now can set up an alert too. Look how quick that alert was. That alert is real time. That alert tells you, hey, something changed. How easy are alerts to set up? You go to alerts, you go to profiles, right here, let's see if I can find my, I've been working on this so it kind of moved around on me a little bit. I go to service account modified and I can set up an alert, a critical alert, even email myself. So, we just went full circle. You're sitting at your desk, working away. You can now get emails on any change that occurs within Active Directory when the change occurs. Now, think about that. You can get an email within seconds when any of your service accounts are modified. Instead of an hour, a day later, when someone calls you and says they can't access the application because of the service is down, you've already fixed the problem. And we give you the ability to generate alerts on any of these reports that you have in AD Audit Plus. So with AD Audit Plus, we overcome all the problems that we had with the event viewer. Now, we are using the security log events. We are gathering them real time, putting them into our database. We are not querying the domain controllers here. We are querying the database that's away from the domain controllers, but all the information came from the domain controllers. So the log size on the domain controller doesn't matter now. We're gathering the information as it occurs, allowing you, the administrator, to generate reports and to get real-time alerts on the things that matter to you. And the things that matter to you might be for compliance, right? I mean, you have SOX requirements. You have to be able to generate reports on OU management, user management, log on duration, all of these things. We do that for you. It's with a couple of clicks that you can look at this information. Some of you may be concerned about log on failures. I want to know about my log on failures. I want to know in August, were there any log on failures? Oh, my goodness, there were. Which ones? Here they are. Oh, why was there a log on failure? Well, the account was disabled here, and here it was a bad password. What if I have 20 bad passwords in a row, and then my account locks out? Well, that could be an attack. Do you know when things like that are occurring on your network? I don't think you do. So, so as you can see, AD Audit Plus is extremely robust. And when we go back to our scenario, our scenario meaning I want to be able to customize reports, I want to be able to get alerts because I want this change monitoring definition to be in place. And I said it was a very, it was a very difficult thing to achieve. We just achieved it with an easy tool. You can download and install AD Audit Plus and get all of your domain controllers configured in it in less than 15 minutes. That's how easy we're talking about this tool. You can start generating alerts for key configurations in your Active Directory across all your domain controllers in less than 20 minutes. That's how powerful this tool is. That's how easy this tool is. When you combine the ease of a tool and the extreme power of a tool, you have the perfect tool. And I truly believe that AD Audit Plus is that tool. So hopefully today I've shown you some things in Active Directory that you can do to help yourself. We have to get the, the auditing set up. That's critical. Auditing, advanced auditing, and everything goes into the security log. But that's all we need for Manage Engine for AD Audit Plus. Once that information is in that security log, we're golden. Now we have the ability to go in and run reports to generate alerts on that information to give you, the administrator, real-time information about what's changing in Active Directory that's very difficult to do otherwise. So I just want to say thank you, and as my gift, I want you to go download the AD Audit Plus, please. My other gift to you, 
our gift, Manage Engine's gift, is that Security Baseline website. Please go to that website. Get the information off that site. At the bottom of that website, you have amazing blogs and videos walking you through how to secure your environment. You need to monitor and secure your environment in order for you to get an idea of what's going on. Now, my email is Derek at ManageEngine.com. Please, if you have any questions, email me. You obviously have emails from the other team members at AD Solutions. Please email them with questions. If we didn't get to your question on today's webinar, I apologize for that, but, but we'll get to your question. And you can email me. You can email any one of us. We love to receive questions and answer questions um, to solve problems for Active Directory. So with that, I hope you had a great webinar. I hope you got some really good information. And I'm now going to release you to get back to your job, get back to working. And um, please, if, if you have a seminar coming to your city, please sign up and, and, and come shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. Um, if you're going to be in Milan, Rome, or Tokyo um, at the end of this year, um, if you're on the webinar, please um, come to the, web, the seminar. Come up and meet me. I'd love to meet you. Um, also, we have many other events that are going on. Um, throughout the year. Um, so please um, look us up. Please enjoy the tools. Please download the free tool. And with that, I'm going to let you go. Thank you very much. Everyone at Manage Engine thanks you. Um, and until the next time, um, this is Derek Melber. Um, thanks for attending. Mm -hmm.